All right. Um, obviously, uh, uh, took it on the chin here this last week against Baylor. Um, after kind of coming back and, and watching the video, I'm, I, quite honestly, I'm really, um, I'm really proud of our players. Our, our uh, mentally, uh, we did some good things. Uh, we played hard to the very, very last snap, which I'm very proud of in relation to kind of what the score was. Uh, we've obviously got to step up and make some more plays. I think, uh, I think especially from an offensive perspective, in terms of, uh, you know, coming down and, and making some catches. We we. <laughs> Had some opportunities early in the game. Not that it was going to make a huge difference, but one of the things that you have to do is you have to keep pace with with their offense. I um, and I really believe that Baylor is a very very good football team. And quite honestly, if we played them ten times, we're going to lose ten games the way they're playing right now. I uh, haven't been this impressed with a, a football team that I've played in a long long time, and they uh, they assault you. Are so fast, and they put you out of your game plan so fast uh, that it's just um, hats off to Art and kind of what he's done there. Uh, I think that uh, even as he mentioned uh, prior to the game, and I think it de- was demonstrated during the game, I think where they've really, really improved is defensively. Uh, assignments, personnel, uh, abilities to make plays, and I think that showed up too. So I'm going to be intrigued with watching them the rest of the year um, because I want to know who's going to beat them. I mean, I'm kind of at that point. I, they're, they're very, very good. And obviously we can play better. Uh, but, again, I'm very proud of our players in terms of how we approach the game. And we got beat by a better football team, and that's kind of the bottom line. There's no other excuses. They're better than us. The um, Obviously, it leads us into this week. And... I think that we're relatively healthy. We've been playing on an awful lot of people, as I've mentioned here in uh, this press conference before. And I think that's I think that's going to play out really, really well for us as the season progresses. As I've mentioned, I think we've kind of grinded up our first teamers uh, so early in the season that by the time midseason kind of rolled around, we, we were either injured or out of gas. And... You know, I think we're actually getting better right now, than, and I think that's going to prove uh, as we move forward. I think that's the, the moves that we made early on I think are going to help us an awful lot. still like to see our timing get a little bit better on offense in the passing game. Uh, some of that is just the number of players that we're playing. And, but I, I do think that Colton is healthy, and I think he demonstrated that this last week in terms of a few things that he did. Uh, so it's nice to have him back. Uh, in terms of the injury front from an offensive perspective, I think Jerron Ham is questionable. Uh, as you might have noticed in the first quarter, he has a, a lower body injury uh, that uh, while he's uh, working his way back from it, I, I just think it's going to be maybe difficult for him to get enough practice time in this week in order to play a significant amount against Tulane. Uh, defensively, uh, obviously, uh, change the scheme this week uh, because Baylor has so much uniqueness to them. Uh, much um, a different style of defensive scheme, I think, kind of going into this one. But we are healthy, and uh, again, we've played an awful lot of people, and and so I'm anxious to kind of watch this kind of come out and play. Uh, we've played against two top 25 teams in the country, and uh, you know, uh, there's only eight teams that can say that right now in the nation. We're one of those eight. Um, and we're sitting obviously at two and two, but we've again played some good people, and, uh, and hopefully we are getting better because of it. And we'll find out obviously an awful lot more this next week against uh, Tulane. I think Tulane's improved, and they're uh, I think a much more consistent, dangerous offense than what they were at this point in time last year. Partly because they've got a healthy quarterback, which they did not have last year. I've been really impressed with uh, Montana in the sense that um, you know he. <coughs> has made some outstanding throws and sometimes many times under duress. And I think that that's, you know, the, the true mark of a really good quarterback. Uh, got a nice receiver, nice uh, running back, you know, guys that uh, they're playing hard, um, a little bit to more multiple than maybe what they were last year offensively. And then defensively, they're extremely multiple just like they were last year. Obviously more comfortable in their scheme. They're really, really throwing their bodies around. Uh, creating a lot, significant number of turnovers. And, uh, you know, so we have got our work cut out for us. 
uh, been asked the question already about the impact of last year. And, I, you know, I'm not much into comparative scores either between uh, year to year or from week to week in relation to one team playing one and then all of a sudden, you know, you come up against that same opponent. Uh, I think this is all about just kind of who's ready to play this week and about those matchups and obviously excited uh, after having three of the first four on the road, have that opportunity to come back home. We're also excited about that. So questions? <coughs> Todd, I watched the uh, game again last night. Probably a different view than you would as Masochist? Uh, no, I was honestly in the first two quarters. I thought it was a, a football game that was, it was a play here and a play there. And you're right, you probably wouldn't have won the football game, but you were so close. But when in that ball game the other day did it become a coaching, uh, a different type of a coaching when you knew it was kind of out of hand? you got to kind of coach the psychic of those guys. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, – and that's kind of, I think, one of the reasons I was really proud of the team. Um, because I saw you go over to a lot of guys and pat them on the head and and you know tell them yeah, they're hitting the game and not you know yeah no it's a um, it's it's all about standard of performance I mean you know I I know I say that all the time I know it's coach speak but the the reality is it, it's about playing as as well as you can play and uh, if they've got a ten one hundred meter guy and I don't have a ten one hundred meter guy. That, my ten one guy, my ten four guy, which we had one that got outrun twice. Um, he's going to continue to get outrun, and you know I I really can't do much about that other than just you know kind of pat him on the back and say hey let's you know let's try again. I think that they um, they get after you um, as I mentioned so fast that um, you know it, it can certainly psychologically affect you. I talked all week to our players about emotionally being prepared um, because I think that's part of their game. I think they emotionally get you out of your game so fast because of what they do. Um, and But I, I thought our players continued to play hard uh, throughout. And, you know, again, as coaches, we talk about, you know, it's always 0-0. Zero, zero. It's not over to the last second of the clock. But obviously that game was different because it's 42 nothing in the first quarter. And... Uh, that's that's the true test of character, isn't it? If you keep playing hard, and and so I'm proud of our guys for that because there, there's a lot of teams, there's a lot of individuals that can't handle that, and uh, and it's it's so unexpected. Um, I think we've got a good football team, and I, I think they're that much better. And, that, and, and it's hard to be prepared for that. Like I said, I'm anxious to watch them. Maybe they'll run into somebody that, that is going to figure out a way to stop them, but it'll be interesting. Is that coaching them up uh, psychically, uh, psychology, um, on Sunday and then again today, has it become different getting ready for this football game? And how do you, did you sense any kind of a hangover on Sunday? Well, I think that, you know, one of the things when you have expectations, you don't get it, you don't expect – to have a loss like that. And one of the things I tried to talk to our players about was the fact that, hey, um, I, I really believe, I, I've always told the players that you're not always going to like what I tell you, but I'm going to tell you the truth because then I always have credibility. And so there's time periods whenever I've told them, hey, you know, these guys are good. These guys aren't very good. Okay. But it's, again, it's really not about that. It's about just kind of going out and playing. And I, I think our, my players recognize that uh, when they watch the tape, they're smart guys. But they also recognize that whenever I came in and told them that they played against a very, very good football team, that's going to do a, a lot of people in my mind, they're, they're going to do that to a lot of people. I, I think my guys believed that and understood it. And that game's over. We're not playing Baylor this week. And, you know, so consequently, there's a, there's a I think you, you focus on your next opponent, the next psyche of what's – you know what's getting ready to happen to you, and but you know I'm I'm sure, and I warned them against this. I think that one of the things that you can get very much caught up in is those peripheral opponents again, to where you know you walk around campus, and I'm sure that they've heard it this week. You know, wow, you guys, you know, you guys got throttled. You know, boy, you're not very good. We'll see if they listen to that. Well, you know, uh, we have another opportunity to redeem ourselves this Saturday in relation to that. Um, 
but I'm not despondent in any form or fashion because again I believe that I believe that Baylor is that good. I, I, I just I really do. I don't think that we're that bad. I think they're that good. Along the same lines of team psych era yesterday where some of these games we've had again um, on Saturday they asked for a running clock or there's this rule that I didn't know about and some other coaches didn't know about about cutting off the last three minutes of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and some coaches did ask for that, but was, did that ever cross your mind or be, is because of the team psych you didn't want to like say, okay, we surrender because your guys were still giving you know, a, a great approach to what was going on? No, I think that um, – no, I, I did know about the rule. Obviously, it was even there was one even right before our ball game uh, that FIU had requested that, and I'd already heard about that. I, and um, the um, I think you have to I think you have to own up to everything all the time. And uh, you know, we we went to Waco with the idea that we were going to play a sixty minute game. That's our responsibility. I don't care what the other team's doing. That's our responsibility to play for 60 minutes. So in in, uh, in light of your question, I think that would I do something like that? No, because th- th- that kind of, once again, we're not fulfilling our obligation. Our obligation is to be out there for 60 minutes, um, regardless of how tough it is sometimes to handle it. It's, it's still – that's our responsibility. Does that answer your question? It does. It's just I feel like – Like proud of your team, or that might like make them lose some confidence. And so, by Could. continuing to play for 60 minutes, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that some of those people, you know, recognize that that um, as we were having major difficulties, they were having major difficulties, and sometimes it, you know, the, the psychology of your team, I, I suppose, could get ruined by that. Um, I, I think it probably a lot just kind of depends on your team. Yeah. I, I'm I can't do that. I don't think my players would want me to do that. Uh, because that's not what we said we were going to do. And the one thing that we take great pride in is if we say we're going to do something, then we're going to do it. And if we agreed to that game, then we got 60 minutes of it. And that's the way that it is. Is it tough to get a gauge for the identity of this team, considering you guys had two losses to two really good teams, and you had a close win, and you had the big win over Grambling? So at this point in the season, is it tough to get a, a gauge of what the identity of this team is? Yeah, I think that's a really good question uh, because I think you're right. I think that your uh, the Oklahoma game, the offensively, your first, you know, you have a little issue that comes up with the quarterback that kind of changes the game plan. And then obviously we're a better team than Grambling. Uh, we don't quite have a healthy quarterback against Wake Forest, but we're kind of getting better. But you're preparing for this option team that all of a sudden doesn't run any option. And then all of a sudden you move to a team like Baylor, who again just assaults you right off the you know right from the get go, and so I think you know these games that are coming up are going to be a much better measure of kind of what who who and what we are because I think it's been as you mentioned I think it's been a little bit of a difficult measure in relation to kind of who the first four games who we've played about kind of who we are um, because I don't know that um, the Oklahoma thing again got uh, thrown away early Baylor's much better. As I mentioned, Grambling, we're better than. And, and Wake Forest was such a unique game. There, I don't know that there's one out there. Do you say, okay, here's, these are good comparisons. This is kind of normal football, and you're in a normal situation. Did you have to come in Sunday like, wondering how to approach your team? Because in some instances, like talking to guys, maybe they were worried that you were going to come in and jump all over them about how, you know, how could you let this happen or is a certain play that you got beat on. Did you have to like go through it in your mind about how you were going to approach them, or did you make really. you go in saying, you know, we just got to be five better teams? No, I mean I was pretty aware of it because uh, we weren't having a lot of mental errors, as I mentioned. I can generally tell that on Saturday during the game. Um, you want you want all losses to hurt, and and you want them all to drive you to the point to where you work harder and you <coughs> become better out of it, right? I mean that's what's great about adversity. Mm-hmm. The um, you know, I had a. I think I had a very open conversation with our players after the game. I think I, I continued with that on Sunday. Um, I think that that um, I would hope anyway that the players would. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of coach speak with them. I'm pretty. 
uh, what you kind of see is what you get. Okay, I, I mean, there's I don't hold anything back with them. I tell them exactly what's on my <coughs> mind all the time, and uh, and that's kind of what we had that conversation about. Hey, Todd, let's uh, talk about Tulane. Mm -hmm. The only thing we've seen out of them is what they did against Louisiana Tech, but I thought the Bulldogs did a great job that night of shutting down their run game. Right. Um, and it forced them into a pass. Obviously, they had some success. But, I mean, talk to me about strategies and slowing down that passing attack that they obviously ramped up a little bit. Well, I, I think that they're like any offense in the sense that they're going to take whatever you give them. And, and in the, the game you're referencing in Louisiana Tech, uh, Kim Dameron, who we all know, uh, you know, he brought a lot of pressure against them. And it becomes really difficult when you're bringing pressure to run the football just because uh, you have that extra hat, that extra helmet in there that you can't block. They're bringing an extra guy. And so, uh, consequently, it gets very difficult to run the football. And then you have to be able to throw it effectively. And as you mentioned, they, they did that. I think that uh, what what you've seen in their ball games, especially in their wins, has been – uh, this ability, obviously, to put some points on the board, but also they force so many turnovers. And I think in that ball game with Louisiana Tech, field position was really, really critical, whether it come through the special teams or through a turnover. Uh, and you know, a lot of their scores came on on some shorter fields. Uh, so you know, that's something that that good fo football teams capitalize on. That's something that we've got to control uh, this week. Obviously, is we've turned the ball over too many times so far this year. Now, some of those I can live with just a little bit because I think you, you get into some of those turnovers, which are those desperation ones where everybody's just trying so hard to make a play because you've got to find a way to make a play to get back in the game. And in uh, this last week, obviously, they were in the first quarter because <laughs> you had to stop it. You know, at some point in time, you had to try to create something to try to get some momentum. But... Um, you know, obviously, we're excited about playing Tulane. A lot of our players know uh, players on this football team because they they uh, they played with them, they played against them in high school, they went to camps together, all those other kinds of things. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're excited about. Like I said, we're excited about coming back home. It should be a great crowd. Uh, we're anxious to. You know, I, I think there is a little bit of redemption going in this week in terms of our guys, in terms of their focus uh, about. Regardless of whether it's right or wrong, uh, the, the way people view them, they you know they got to earn back some respect in, in their minds. I think um, because you know again people, I, I they I, I think the players and myself recognize how good Baylor is, but I recognize that the outside peripheral f folks maybe don't, and so we've got a chance to redeem ourselves. So we need to play well. Can you talk about uh, red zone efficiency and the need to improve it? Well, I think that, yeah, I think that there's a lot of statistics that can become skewed. We kind of talked about this last week a little bit. Um, you know, obviously, we, we, we knew we had to be aggressive against Baylor. You can't go out and kick field goals with those guys and expect to win. Now, it might, you might feel better that you got another three points on the board, but I don't really feel better about stuff like that. I kind of want to win. And, uh, you know, so you look back at the Oklahoma game, which we knew that we weren't going to be able to trade field goals with them. Uh, we've had... Uh, you know, the grambling where, you know, we lost it on downs because it was, you know, at the end of the game and we were just setting on, setting on it. We've had a botch snap. We've missed a field goal, obviously, against Wake Forest. And so, yeah, the red zone stuff, I'm not too concerned about it because I think that um, are the things that we can get better on. Absolutely. But so many of those things are so skewed by what the game's like <coughs> and, and how many chances you're taking down there. You know, a, a normal game, as Ron was mentioned earlier, I don't know that we've had a normal game. Um, and, you know, so I'm kind of anxious to maybe get into some normal games. But uh, because we've, you know, again, played field position against Wake Forest. You know, this last week it was, hey, you know, doesn't make any difference about field position. Doesn't make any difference about time possession, right? You know, we had 12 minutes and 20-some-odd seconds, I think, in the first quarter of time of possession. It's 42 to nothing. How many time of possession means anything? Not anymore. You know, some games it does. You know, um, again, Wake Forest, there was some significance to it. But, you know, we're um, – I'm not into the statistics as much just to kind of get back to answering your question because I think they can get really skewed. And I think, I think right now red zone efficiency for us offensively is really, really skewed by the games we've played. You got a glimpse there of Burley Brown 
this past week for kind of an extended period, not just like mop up duty, but almost the whole fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. What'd you really see out of him as far as kind of looking ahead in the future of the program? I'm excited about Braylon. I've, I've mentioned that before. I, I still would like to get him in earlier in the game. Um, and But because of his injury, you know, I, I haven't felt like he's been completely healthy, and that's not necessarily, I think, fair to the football team to put him in that situation. I think that he's feeling better now. Uh, you know, he's still not getting those opportunities, though. You know, because like you said, it, it, even though it was extended, it was mop-up. I mean, you know, we're, we're running the clock, and we're milking the clock, and he's turning around and handing the ball off, and I need to see him do some things. Um, but I've seen it out in practice, and so I have some comfort level there and anxious to get him in some ball games to where, uh, as we did with Cody last year, and we're, you know, to where you've always got that guy in, in during that time period when you're actually running your offense and he's having to be functional. And, and really, Braley has not had to go into a game this year yet and have to be functional. What are some of the adjustments you're going to have to make if Ham isn't available to play on Saturday? Not too much. Um, we've cross-trained all of our receivers over a period of time. Uh, Tony Cook will step up and, and do well, and then whether it be Kenzie Jackson moving over to X, Trey Perrier moving over to X, we've got multiple options there. And we've, Because of our different personnel groupings, we'll uh, certainly miss Duran in relation to that, but in terms of guys that have played enough, we've got enough guys that have played enough to where um, you know, it's, it's the, the impact is only going to be the loss of Duran's uh, uh, talent rather than the loss of having to you know, change your system because of it. Is this a turning point game for you guys, would you say, given everything that you've said about, you know, like regaining respect? No, and... no I don't think there is any such thing. I think that it is what it is. It's the next game. I think that this is uh, – it, it's a telling game, I think, to some degree in relation to uh, what you were re referencing earlier about, you know, kind of where, where are we at because we just had some really, you know, some strange, strange early games. Um, and so I think it's it's more telling than it is turning, because turning acts like that all of a sudden there's this failure. We've played two top 25 teams. We got beat by both of them. So does everybody else, except for Georgia and Arizona State, and they're one and one. They're the other two that have played against two top 25 teams. Uh, probably, realistically, we're probably where most people thought we'd be right now. It's two and two. And probably pe some people thought we'd probably be one and three. Uh, Vegas did. So, um, yeah, I think turning point would be referencing that all of a sudden that there's been some disappointment. I think we've just had two tough games. We had one easy one. We had another one that was a difficult game against a quality opponent in, in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And, and uh, you know, now we're kind of getting back into I think this season just kind of played out like that in relation to the schedule. So, I mean, we'd like to have a different schedule if you're referencing that. But that's not – that is what it is, right? I don't know. I, I've seen it kind of happen both ways. I've been in it long enough. Sometimes young guys, you know, they, they forget things so fast. You know, I mean, they're just, you know, they're just excited to play and where's my next meal? Um, and, and then, you know, sometimes obviously with the young team, it can upset them. I think the same thing happens with older guys in relation to, you know, from a psychological standpoint, where are you at? I think from an expectation standpoint, it's kind of like what Ron was referencing. If our players are at that point where all of a sudden they think, well, we've got to turn this thing, then they're probably looking in the wrong direction and because they're just not understanding kind of what's happened. I think that if we are handle it maturely, which I expect that we will, then we'll come out and play well this week. If we don't and we're going to listen to the peripheral stuff, then, um, then we're not as mature as what I thought we'd be. You know, because, again, we're the ones that have control over that. Nobody else does. And so we, we can control uh, our emotions and kind of where we're headed. You mentioned expectations there where some people, you know, say two and two is where you should be, some people one and three. Where do you feel your team should be right now? Based off who we played two and two. I mean, I, as I mentioned before, I'd like to play the Oklahoma game again healthy. I'm not saying that we win it. I'm just saying I'd like to play it healthy 
Uh, and I already referenced that I think Baylor is, uh, they're a much better football team than us. And I, I'm, you know, uh, I'm willing to admit that. They're, but I, I'm anxious to see, too. Again, I think I've been in this thing long enough to I'm anxious to see what happens with them the rest of the season. We'll see who's going to stop them. I think he's really, really close to being fully back. I think he's excited about it. I think our team's excited about it. I know Coach Farmer is excited about it because it makes it a lot easier to call a game. Mm-hmm. And um, and yeah, so I, yeah, I think I think he's I think he's ready to go. I think he's excited about being healthy and and uh, really excited about playing this game. Has the playbook been kind of? Dumbed down, I guess, for lack of a better term, because of his injuries. No, I don't think it's been dumbed down. It's just been changed. It's just, um, you know, you're always going to build your offense around somebody. The focal point might be your running backs, that might be your quarterback. And one of the things that I mentioned earlier that I think was really, really frustrating was when both of them were hurt. Then all of a sudden, you've really got to change your mentality about what you do. Um, and you know, it would be silly of us not to build it around Colton because of the things that he's done in the past. And so we want to do things that allows him to become the best player that he can be because then, every, then his, his play accentuates everybody else's play. Um, but then when all of a sudden that changes, then you know, players have to learn new things. They have to take on a, a harder, uh, more difficult role. The defenses understand that they don't have to prepare for some things. And when you're only playing with 10 guys, which basically if your quarterback's not a threat, then that's what you're doing, then it changes the defensive structure, which then obviously, obviously, again, impacts the game plan in relation to what you're already doing. You know, so uh, as I mentioned after, you know, during the Oklahoma game, after they recognized that he was injured, all of a sudden that extra hat that was always kind of watching out for him, that, that uh, thief linebacker that wasn't running out to cover, all of a sudden, you know, they weren't concerned about him anymore. And their whole game plan changed, and then when they recognized that, so uh, yeah, there's there's some impact, and uh, it, you know you, you can't control injuries. It is what it is. The the problem was that we had two at the same position early on. Like we're healthier now to where we're you know what could it happen again? Sure. Is it? Uh, or can we now offensively get back to kind of what we're doing and be functional, kind of what we've done in the past? And yes, and so. And that's what we need more repetitions on right now because we basically missed, you know, a two and a half week window there to where, you know, we weren't getting our offense run. Hey Todd, tell to me about the things that impress you most about Tulane and the improvements they've made from week one to week four. I think probably the, the, the thing that I always look at first and foremost is how hard is the team playing. And um, you know, even uh, against Syracuse this last week, when the game started kind of getting out of hand they're still playing extremely hard. Uh, they're uh, obviously a very cerebral group of young men uh, being at Tulane, and they do an awful lot of things. I thought last year, because the transition, you know, we caught them off guard on a few things because they were just new to the system. They were transitioning and trying to figure things out. And I think that uh, overall, both sides of the football, they've got a better understanding of what they're doing right now. And you know, we, a, a lot of plays last year, as you'll recall, both sides of the football uh, came through. Uh, you know, a, a guy busting a coverage, a guy missing a block up front, and, and all of a sudden now you've got a you know a turnover. And uh, you know, they're not doing those kind of things right now, and that's just kind of part of you know growing a program up a little bit and growing up with the players. They they learn the schemes and they become more comfortable in them and they execute them better and. They transition uh, weekly uh, at a higher pace. So. And it looked like Jairus was looking more like Jairus as well against Baylor. Yeah. And then I noticed on, on the depth chart, Mo was moving to number two. Like right. Over Devontae. I saw Devontae do some pretty good things, I guess, early on in the season, like, I guess, against Grambling. Right. Stuff. But what, what was the thought process there with moving Mo to two? Well, I, I am excited about Jairus because I do think Jairus is back. And, 
you know, he wasn't quite as healthy against Oklahoma, and it's just nice because he's a senior and you want, you know, you, you, he's worked hard and you want those guys to have good senior years. doesn't mean that they become starters, as kind of what happened with Mo. Mo was playing well, but Devontae was playing better. And we think now that Mo's playing better than Devontae based off this last game, and that's competition. And our players recognize that, you know, there's going to be slides up and down the depth chart based off that last ball game. Uh, there's going to be a body of work, but – you know, as coaches uh, and as players, there's going to be some recognition that, you know, uh, this guy's playing better at this point in time, and so he's going to move up the depth chart, and we have competition at running back. And, and obviously I expect that Centaurus is going to get a little bit more playing time this week too, which adds another guy into the mix. I saw him running around out there a little bit against Baylor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How excited was he once you said, okay, Bob, going in? Oh, he was pretty excited, you know, um, yeah, you know, I wanted to get him out there because I think there's uh, something about, even though obviously he didn't do much in the game, mm -hmm. uh, there's something about getting back out on the field. And I think especially after an injury that, that uh, you know, I think any athlete that has missed some time, it's important to kind of get back there and kind of get that competitive spirit going again, even if you know that you're not going to be doing much of anything. And so, yeah, he, uh, you know, he got out there and, did a couple things and where he wasn't going to get hit. We knew he wasn't going to get hit because he hasn't had as much contact as, as you know, to prepare for that. But I expect that, you know, we'll have more contact this week and kind of continue to kind of ramp him up. And I, I don't know how much he'll get against Tulane, but he's going to get some. He's going to get more than what he got, obviously, this last week. But it was it was fun. I uh, He was glowing whenever he came off the field in terms of, I mean, his eyes were lit up and just – you know, just excited. I mean, that he just had a chance to get back out on the field. So good for you know, good for him. Good for us. I think he was skipping more than running on the field. That's probably true. Kind of whenever, yeah, the whenever he kind of came off, he had a he ran right by me and <laughs> fist bumped me. You know, on the way uh, off the field. So. I think it would be Tulane week. I think every coach gets this going into their week of preparation for Tulane. But do you have any previous relationship with Joe Montana or any? Did you, did you ever cross paths at any no, time? No, no. He's older than you, right? Uh, he is. <laughs> yeah, he he would be a little older than 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 I am. Um, no, I, I'm I used to travel around to these NFL camps in the summers and watch some of their. Uh, they weren't OTAs at that point in time, but do some some of those kind of things. I remember watching, you know, uh, going to uh, camps, you know, where. Um, Went to the 49er camp, went to the Chief camp. And so I remember watching him whenever he was, you know, at his, in his heyday. So an awfully good player. Is there, like, some DNA carryover? Like, when you see some characteristics that his son, like, possesses that maybe? Oh, wow. I, boy, the, you know, the game's changed so much right now. Um, yeah, the throwing motion's not quite the same. Uh, you know, the uh, – I tell you what, he, as I mentioned before, he's uh, one of the things I've been really impressed with is he he'll he'll take a hit and he'll get right back up. Some quarterbacks get flustered and he doesn't get flustered at all, and that's probably very, uh, very much like his father, who was you know I think a pretty tough guy and uh, kind of you know like like the competition, wanted the ball you know whenever it mattered. Whatever it's worth, he's fifty-seven. 57. Ma yeah. Magic box that, did you? You look so much younger than him. That's what I was trying oh, to do there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I appreciate that, Tabby. It's not the age, it's the mileage. I got a lot of miles on me. <laughs> Any other questions for Coach Barry? Yeah, All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. <clears throat> First up, tight end Harley CNO. Floor is open for questions. I don't know. I'm gonna try it out, see what I got going on. <laughs> Part of being lazy as well. <laughs> Harley, what was it like getting back out there Sunday? Like you know, talking to Coach Barry, it doesn't seem like it came in really hard on you guys because you know what kind of caliber of team Baylor was. So just maybe kind of flushing it out and then getting 
moving on to Tulane just go did everybody kind of seem to just be like okay let's just move on from this and, and get to the next week yeah, I think uh, one of the best attributes of this team is, as Coach is always preaching, is uh, transition. You know, in football, there's one thing that we talk about, a 24-hour rule, whether you win or lose, you know, by the time we get out on the field on Sunday to for practice, you know, move on to the next game, put that last game behind us, learn from it. Whether we win or lose, you know, there's always good things and bad things to pull out of a, a game. So I think the best thing that we do as a team is uh, transition into the next week. What's your mindset in the red zone to always be ready as, as a weapon for Colton? Uh, I understand that I've, I'm a big body, so I can use my body as a as a weapon, you know, to show off defenders. And I'm a big target, so I guess you know Colton sees me a little easier. And I just understand that the red zone is really when you got to make plays. So that's what I try to do for my team. Do you have? Ever, I mean, you've what, had touchdowns in three of the last four games, or three last three games. So mm -hmm. Nothing against AU, but is there a moment in that? When you're doing yeah, after the celebration and everything, that you're like, gosh, I've been dreaming about this for all those times whenever you were at like your lowest point. I think the only time I really had that was Grambling, because for some some reason it happened exactly as I've been picturing it from the moment I was in the hospital bed, and uh, you know I kind of I kind of keep it always in the back of my mind what I've been through, but uh, when I'm out there, it's just I'm just enjoying playing football again. You know, I understand that. What I've been through, I'm luckily, I'm blessed to be out there, you know, as a football player, still being able to enjoy the game with my team, and I just kind of put it all behind me. After the game, I definitely reflect on it when I'm with my family, and I just kind of think about it a little bit. Being a South Louisiana guy, do you put a little bit more emphasis maybe into this game, you knowing Tulane didn't really give you any looks in the recruiting or anything like that? Uh yeah, there's, there's a little bit of that, I guess, chip on your shoulder because you, I didn't get any looks from them, but. Then again, I'm happy. I think I belong where I belong, and I realize there's a reason that they didn't. Uh, they made my decision easy for me. You know, go to ULM, and now I believe I belong here. And obviously, everything I've been through, I feel like that's the reason I was here. You know, I was able to impact a lot of people here because of my situation. I became a, an emotional leader for this team. You know, being through my circumstances, and I just feel like it kind of helped me push me into the right direction. Do you have any close friends on the team that maybe? Yeah, I have uh, two friends that I play with on high school with, a uh, running back, and a, he's a freshman right now, a defensive end. But me and the defensive end, we grew up together. Uh, kind of not related, but down south Louisiana, everybody's related. So we uh, grew up playing in the mud together and just in the bayou. So it'd be good to see them out there on the field. What was their name? Uh, Cedric Thompson and Luke Jackson. <laughs> well, you know, I'm sure you have heard why I'm asking a really good question about you know the team's identity and going into this game. Now that you've kind of gotten those two top 25 teams out of the way, and you know not to like take anything away from the teams that you have coming up on the schedule, but do you really feel like, like this is a week where you can really embrace like finding out who y'all really are and kind of uh, being able to recognize your true identity? Yeah, I think uh, every game is big because, like Coach Barry preaches, it's the next game. You know, we try to be 1-0 and every week. We try not to look back or look forward. We just focus on our next opponent. But I still think this team's kind of searching for our identity because, you know, like Coach Barry said, we haven't played a, the same game all year, you know. But now we're getting into conference play and in Tulane, who's better than they were last year. I think this is a big game to kind of show people, put on tape, you know, this is who we are and this is what you're going to get whenever you face us. Hey, I don't know if I saw it on Twitter or Facebook or Tabby or whatever. Um, Colton apparently made a nice little quote or a proclamation, so to speak, after that ball game about how they're put, putting this thing behind them and we're going after a conference championship. Um, it's nice to see a guy who threw a couple pick sixes and obviously got it handed to him, bounced back up off that campus pretty good. Um, so a nice leadership role. Yeah, I think one, one of the things that gets overlooked with Colton is, you know, obviously he's a heck of a player, but... He is a great leader, you know, to be able to come out and just let everybody know, hey, you know, this is something that we're going to put behind us and learn from and move forward. You know, we ask that y'all forget about this with us. You know, obviously we keep it in the back of my mind. Anytime you get beat 70 to 7, you know, you're not going to truly forget about it. But, you know, we're taking this and just moving forward and just trying to grow from it. Do you have a lot of people on opposing teams or just from outside the area recognize you or like, approach you before a game because of your story? It's like every time it seems like that you're on TV, I have people try to reach out to me wanting stories on you. But, I mean, I don't think people realize
much how unique of a situation it is. And um, do you have opponents ever recognize and like? Uh, it's funny you asked that. Uh, the first time it happened to me was uh, Baylor's coach Art Browse. He uh, he approached me after the game and said, "I'm proud of you. You know, I like your story. Uh, keep on working hard and doing." Doing what you're doing, so that that felt good, you know, to have a uh, opposing coach like like him, who's really well acclim- acclimated, uh, approach me and say something like that. It kind of helps you keep going. I've also had a guy uh, approach me on Facebook from Illinois and say he wants to, he really likes my story and wants to catch a game. I don't know if I should really feel creeped out about that one or not, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't think I'll ever get back to normal. I think I'm finally coming under the understanding that this is where I'm going to be. This is the type of player I'm going to have to be. Uh, it's funny, you know, I remember the Oklahoma game and the Wake Forest game after the first drive. You know, I, I don't know if you remember Wake Forest. It was 17 plays. I came off and I said, Coach, I can't go. And then we got time to go back out there. And I said, no, nah, I'm going in. You know, it seems to be a re- reoccurring theme. But, uh, no, you know, I had trouble in the Baylor game because it seemed like every time I blinked, I was right back out there and kickoff return, and we were going out as an offense. So that, that's when it got a little rough. But I, I'm growing used to it and understanding that this is who I am. Any other questions for Harley? Congrats. Keep it up. Thank you. Time to get hair in shape. Hmm? Time to get hair in shape. <laughs> Justin, you yourself having a great year punting, but get to go against really one of the premier college kickers in Santos this week. What have you seen out of him that maybe you kind of mimic or want to bring into your game? Man, he um, his consistency on field goals, like, man, what did he go, 20, 21 last year? Uh, I know um, he's as consistent as there is in the country, and you know, if there's anything I can bring to my game, it's that. And uh, just the confidence you know, he brings to that field goal unit when they go out there. Hey, scoot a little bit closer to the table. Ah. Go to the mic. Right. Hey, it is. <laughs> Kill me. You know, Coach Barry is a guy, a riverboat gambler type, who's always going to play those on fourth down. But, I mean, is, do you already know that? And it's not like you have to tell yourself, like, you, I know he still has confidence in me because you already kind of know what kind of coach he is instead of, you know, some people want to ask me, hey, y'all, forget the kicker at home. Like, why aren't you bringing him up for a field goal? Mm-hmm. But you pretty much know it's coming, right? Yeah, we, we know we want to score a touchdown. Offense, you know, um, you know, of course, I'd like to go out there and, um, you know, kick a field goal. But I know the best thing for our team is, you know, to go score a touchdown. And uh, that's going to help us win. So I try not to think about, you know, what I want so much. But it's, what, it's what's best for the team. Yeah. You say about life for some punting after what you did today. Yeah. <laughs> did you realize that you had punted a 77 yard up until? I didn't even know. <laughs> I, I knew it went pretty far because it went over his head. But the roll after, but I wasn't expecting, you know, that. Yeah. I didn't know it was that far. What did it mean to you when you found out that you got the special teams player of the week from the Sports Writers Association? Uh, it, was, it was pretty cool. Um, you know, uh, well, we have nine punts, and it was a, kind of a, one of those awards you, you know, you don't really want to get sometimes but um, for punting, um, but it was, it was a good award to get. You've had a lot, uh, lot more distance on your punts, a lot better hang time. Have you really adjusted your approach at all to the ball or anything? Yeah, you're talking about punting? Yeah. Yeah, punting, um, I learned a lot this summer about, um, you know, conditions like with the wind and a lot, you know, a lot of te- technical stuff with my uh, form, and it's, it's definitely paying off a lot um, this year with, um, you know, distance and um, the height and a lot in the weight room too, just getting a little stronger, gaining a little weight. That all played in a lot. You're also kind of a South Louisiana, not kind of, you are a South Louisiana yes, guy. Yes. But do you have uh, some connections to Tulane with a lot of different guys? I really don't. You know, I played against, you know, a bunch of guys, but no no really, like, friends or anything like that. 
Not really, no. Yeah. Well, it's the same type of question with Miley. And do you feel like, because you've gotten like those first four games out of the way of the top 25 opponents, like now is really the time to kind of embrace and discover like a true identity going into this game, especially being the last out-of-conference game before y'all try to, you know, that ultimate goal of a conference championship? Yeah, I think um, it's going to be good finally getting to play, you know, some teams that are like, like us, you know, and um, gaining confidence and, you know, really seeing who we are. I think we know we're a lot better than, you know, what we showed last week. But um, I think we're, we're about to, like, really figure out where we're going to go this year.